Aloha. You're watching Cradle Point, part of Ericsson's. Let's see, what do we want to call this? This is the Friday catch up with the threat intelligence team. Let's catch up with threat intelligence every Friday. Maybe take a look at some of the breaches over the week or the things that might impact you in the coming weeks. And like always, we have Alex Ryan with us. She's one of our senior threat intelligence researchers. Good to see you on a Friday, Alex. I'm glad it's Friday. So we're thinking about doing this every week, like I said, kind of yeah. looking at some of the stuff that might hit over the past week. Now, you still better tune in for the Saturday security stories because those are the kind of ones that go <laughs> off the rails, of course. <laughs> so, Alex, this first one we got is CISA releases nine industrial control system advisories. What is this all about? Yeah, so you'll see that those are majority Siemens and then one Rockwell Automation. So these are industrial control systems or part of those uh, industrial control systems that connect network components. Now, the advisory on all of these is not the same. You know, it ranges from, you know, a CVVS score of six over to, you know, 9.8, but most of them are low complexity, um, exploitable remotely, and they're controlling the network path between industrial control systems. So if you have these kinds of uh, devices on your network, network segmentation and um, IDS IPS on those networks is going to be really helpful to see these kinds of attacks. And certainly something Cradle Point can help with, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We do the zero trust network segmentation, so we're on it. All right. And then the other one we want to cover, these are going to be little just quick snackable pieces of content for you. So Krebs, uh, just what was that? Just yesterday talked about, and it's kind of tied a little bit, uh, why CISA is warning CISOs about this breach. And I hope I pronounce it correctly. Sense is that how you pronounce it? What's this one all about? That's what we're going with, Peter. That's what we've decided. <laughs> So yeah, so this is sense. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is, listen, ask your software providers, anybody that provides you software, if they use Sysense as part of their development cycle, right? And this is about um, uh, supplier security, right? Third-party security um, assessments. It is okay for you to go back to those who develop software that you use and say, did you use this platform? Because right. you are you are exposed if you're going to install their software in your network, because this is going to be a huge third party supply chain attack. Really big, really big. You know, when the advisory from um, Sysense is to go and change your X509 certificate, you know, things are bad, right? So. Yeah. Three terabytes of data was exfiltrated. People uh, or customers were, you know, storing their GitHub repo with Sysense. So all of their code is in there, all of their API keys. And given how fast threat actors move these days, once they have that kind of information, boy, they are quick to go ahead and establish persistence in those environments, lay low for a while and then play the long game of, you know, um, supply chain attack. Right, so you, like it, I noticed in the in the article itself and you mentioned it, so uh, updating credentials, maybe even swapping out your certs, what else? Oh my gosh, Peter, everything, everything. <laughs> I mean, this is why it's kind of crazy is they've given a list of things. I think if you scroll down in this article, there's a, a letter from Sysense that says, please go and change all of these things in order to secure your accounts. It's your accounts, it's your customers' accounts, it's your API keys, it's you know your X509 that you might have with any kind of identity provider. I mean, it's just change anything, everything. Yeah. And for me, the difficulty is you look at this list and the amount of work that it's going to take for defenders to implement these changes is really significant, which means a delay right which only helps the threat actor and give them enough time to try and get their you know foot in the door at um at these software development companies 
right and then you know kind of take their time to figure out when it's the best time to strike <laughs> they're getting really good at playing the long game i'll tell you that yeah yeah i've heard stories you know anywhere from like you know, seven months to, I think the longest I've heard is like six and a half years. This one group was, had, had access to the system before the company, uh, bumped them out. Pretty cool. All right. That we know so of. Like, that we know of. That, <laughs> that we know say? of. That's how long. <laughs> that we know of. Exactly. Yeah. That were reported. Yeah, out. <laughs> exactly. They're probably still some hanging around like, don't tell them that we're here. 100%. Cool. This was fun. So, yeah, just a couple little quick stories. Bring up um, certain things that uh, Alex and the threat intelligence team came up with over the past week. We hope to give you a little insight into these, maybe add it to your weekend reading or to your Monday list of things to do if this impacts you directly. Thanks a lot for your time, Alex. Always great to see you here on the interwebs. We'll do it again <laughs> next week. This is episode one. And what's today's date? Today's date. We should probably call out today's date. April 12th, 2024. Threat Intelligence Fridays. A little threat intelligence insight for you. For Alex, I'm Peter. You can always check it out. Check us out at cradlepoint.com. If you like this content, hit the like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.